So we had that video recently on the phone soap disinfect your smartphone, which is a big deal, a hot topic in 2020 given various world events. The current title, it's like a bathtub for your smartphone. That was a device that was utilizing something called UVC light to kill bacteria, germs, viruses, so forth that could be on the surface of your phone. Some people, they said, I'll just, I, I, can, um, I can wipe my phone down. And the truth is, we haven't really had a clear line up until this point as far as what you should, could, what the manufacturer wants you to wipe your phone with. So obviously, yeah, you can wipe your phone. But it really, it really matters what you're wiping it with and whether or not that's going to be effective in killing the same type of bacteria or harmful stuff that a device like phone soap could kill. Now, obviously, the phone soap is 100 bucks, So people are going to say to themselves, I don't want to spend that. I'd much rather find some alternative solution. Well, interestingly enough, as after we published this video... There were stories popped up on a number of websites about this exact device. It's because, like I said, it's so topical. It's very right now. And then on top of that, Apple comes out and releases an official guideline on how to on how they on how they believe you should clean your phone or what's a recommended a recommended cleaning solution that's mm -hmm. still going to have the properties, the capabilities of disinfection, mm. because obviously just running a microfiber cloth over the top of it ain't going to do very much. And you're probably not going to soak it in the sink and you're probably not going to throw it in the actual bathtub. So there is a guideline here and it's good to know. Apple says, at least on their products, you should feel free to use alcohol-based disinfectant wipes. Mm -hmm. Now, I was wondering about the long-term effect of alcohol on a screen that features an oleophobic coating. So if you look at Apple's support page, they do say you should gently wipe using a 70% isopropyl alcohol or a Clorox disinfecting wipe. And believe it or not, they actually said Clorox. Mm. They didn't say antibacterial wipe or disinfecting wipe. They said Clorox. So that's obviously product placement. Mm -hmm. Now, the confusing part is Clorox, obviously a very prominent bleach brand. And they go on to say, don't ever use any bleach related product, bleach related cleaner. So don't do that and avoid getting any of the moisture from those wipes into the openings. Don't submerge your Apple product in any type of cleaning agent and don't use on fabric or leather surfaces. So I suppose they mean on their cases mm -hmm. that they also sell. So you have an official line now. Don't use aerosol sprays, bleaches, or anything abrasive, and never spray a cleaner directly onto an item. It's There's a lot of rules here, Will, mm. because you know people are going to end up at the Genius Bar saying, I was cleaning my thing because, of course, I cleaned my things, and I'm, clean, I'm cleaning this thing. I, I sang two birthday songs. You I know, sang two birthdays. I, was, I had the water temperature. I had the heat turned up. Yeah. And uh, and now my phone has, is dunked. My phone's a dunkaroo. Yeah. And I like it more as a phone, even mm -hmm. though dunkaroo's delicious. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have an official guideline. You can go look, look at it. It probably uh, applies to pretty much any smartphone that's out there, but this is their official line for their smartphones. So Clorox disinfecting wipes, which are about to go out of stock right now as we speak. Can you get them on Amazon? Zero in stock at Canadian Tire, obviously. Can't buy these right now. Sold out across the planet. People, they, the people go for toilet paper and the wipes. And, and you know, the other day, Will, crazy story here. I was installing something on my truck and I needed isopropyl alcohol. I said, oh, I'll just pop over to the drugstore. Nah. I'll just pop over. I just need a bottle of isopropyl alcohol. I'll yeah. pop over to the drugstore. Guess what I found when I got there? Empty shelves! But then I see Vin in the background. He's pointing. He's waving his hands. He's shouting back there right now, like live. He's back there. Because he's right, I found the bag that he dropped off a while ago of the Apocalypse, uh, the apocalypse kit that he dropped off, yeah. which has 70% isopropyl alcohol in it. Great. 
And so I could do my application. I had to put an adhesive uh, uh, sticky thing in, on somewhere, but it had to be a clean surface. Mm -hmm. And they recommended isopropyl alcohol, at which point I realized this is the thing people are hoarding. Mm -hmm. The isopropyl alcohol, the disinfecting wipes, and the toilet paper. And you just want to install something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. I wanted. It's I didn't. I wasn't using it for the intended yeah. purpose, but we could now. You could also clean your phone with these products. So it's interesting to see Apple uh, jumping, jumping into the, into the cycle here, into the news cycle with this update. And it is an update, a recent update to their how do you, how to clean your Apple products web page. So. If now you can feel comfortable using these products to clean your displays and non-porous surfaces of your Apple devices, or if you're uh, balling out of control and you can spend a hundred bucks to put a phone soap next to your bed, you could do that too. You could go check out that video, and it is like a UVC bathtub for your smartphone. Apple doesn't have any comment on that, probably because they don't retail that product. But the wipes are going to be a bit cheaper. Mm -hmm. Although over the course of the lifespan of your phone, it might add up. Could you use $100 worth of Clorox wipes over the two years you own the phone? Probably not. Experiment. It's still, that's probably the better deal. Yeah. It's a little less fun from a gadget perspective. Yeah, and wiping it takes time. It's a lot of wiping. Yeah. Uh, speaking of iPhones, man builds a guitar out of 107 iPhones. And I'm not really sure why. Uh, well, I'm sure why, because it's a cool thing to do, and you get the story, and, it's, and you fabricate, and it's a hard task. So, but I don't think, from a sound perspective, it has, it has enhanced the performance of the guitar. In fact, it may, the guitar might sound worse. His name is Art Mayer, or Art Meyer. He runs a YouTube channel, 16,000 subscribers, so shout out, fellow YouTuber. He bought a number of iPhones from secondhand stores and repair shops, removed all the components and motherboard and so forth, and glued them together into a mahogany stained block that was approximately four phones thick. Uh, he then used a template in order. You like this stuff, Will, the crafty stuff. Yeah, he I, used, I do. He used a template it. to cut it, it out in the shape of a, te a Tele style guitar, uh -huh. which is a famous guitar shape, obviously. And you're about to see sort of see the finished product here it's kind of a slick design the yeah. edges around the iphone i mean not the most practical thing is probably jet the jagged edges are ramming into the leg as they would right but kind of an accomplishment oh, yeah. and you could imagine something like this also serving a purpose as so sort of an art piece well mm -hmm. it's on the guitar stand or it hangs on the wall or it's framed up for the apple enthusiast and so you got to appreciate the creativity there. He has previously also built guitars out of ramen noodle packs, 36 in fact. Mm. So he gets very creative with the various materials. But he also goes on to say that these iPhones give a lot of high frequencies, despite the fact that the sustained block of the guitar is made of mahogany. The mahogany couldn't save the fact that iPhones are not necessarily the best components for the body of a musical instrument. So it probably is going to be more of an art piece. It is funny that if anyone ever asked you the trivia question, hey, Will, how many iPhones do I need to glue together in order to make a guitar? You know the exact number. You can say 107, sir, and I'll take my payment in gold coins. Right on. That's what you could say to them. Good day, sir. If you, Good day, sir, if you ever get asked that question, but... Uh, it's cool. You can see in there you have some iPhone 6s, iPhone 5s. There are uh, some iPhone 5C, which are the colorful iPhones, which really give it some pop, as our good friend Brad Hall would say. Mm -hmm. That's what gives it the pop. He says that often when he's, when he's checking out, a, you know, putting together an outfit. Yeah, Something shout like out. That. He tried to put the pop in there. So anyway, 107 iPhones, pretty cool, pretty cool little find. Uh, let's shift to Google. They are planning a new Chromecast Ultra based on Android TV. So now a, like a full-fledged set-top uh, set system. Not, not strictly the need to interface from your Android device, but instead mm. something halfway between, well, something like Apple TV, essentially. 
yeah. of course you're still going to cast to it but now you're going to have a dedicated remote apparently the remote device just passed through who's the organization there that look fcc they look at all these devices that transmit and communicate and so forth so it is it's this is a i guess a leak a rumor the nine to five google says exclusive so it's important yeah. that's all you, it's what you need to know about it yeah. uh it's a it's a departure from what appeared to be Google's stance on this. Google, up until this point, they really wanted this thing to happen with the phone. Everything's on your phone. You control it from your phone. You don't need a remote. Chromecast forever. And you're a Chromecast guy. Oh, yeah, I love it. So I, I didn't necessarily mind it either, but I can also understand the appeal in a household of having a remote, mm -hmm. a dedicated remote, another way to interface if your phone is not handy or right. if you're an individual in the house who doesn't maybe doesn't have a phone or doesn't use a phone or something like that a, a kid could pick up the remote here load up some uh, one of their favorite streaming services as this will likely have it's going to likely support 4k hdr content considering the fact that it's the ultra model and it's still also likely to be quite portable in a similar fashion to the previous version a dongle like device it'll just have the controller to go with it now as people move towards these streaming services as their default status their default os for their set top setup i think it's important to have like here's what i'm trying to get at in the absence of a cable box as a cord cutter there is this weird input situation of what to put on and then pulling out the phone, browsing, casting, it's, there's steps involved. Mm -hmm. You could imagine a future in which people choose their device, they choose their streaming service, and they just sort of let it run. It becomes the default status of that display. Uh -huh. And so you can already do it with your Apple TV. I have Apple TV set up just with the wallpaper running. Those video wallpapers are nice. Yeah. And it's just something that's on, and then you can quickly jump into the OS. Mm -hmm. And I could imagine something similar happening here. And then whether you have YouTube TV, they can make a major push for YouTube TV on this thing. Mm -hmm. Or Disney+, Plus, Hulu, uh, Netflix, and others. Whatever your choice happens to be, you could have that running with the dedicated remote. So uh, they probably were going to talk about it at I.O. 2020. They probably will still talk about it in the same uh, without the convention taking place and they'll probably launch it alongside the pixel 4a but for those people out there in the world that are chromecast users and we're always hoping and crossing their fingers uh. looking for a remote control mm -hmm. you know the other thing about the phone that never really took off is the idea of a social environment in which People all have their phones connected to a singular Chromecast and they're all DJing their content. That never happened in my life, even though it could. It could have. There were moments when it was when there was novelty around casting where those circumstances could happen. I would cast. Someone else would cast. It would be a cast party. We wouldn't call it that. Mm -hmm. Just stand around and throw your song on or something. But for some reason, it just never became the default status in the social environments that I was in. Uh -huh. versus a remote which just has universal appeal for some you could just pass it hand me that and a person could figure out how to navigate a simple interface and put on whatever it was that they wanted right so there is still some utility i guess when it comes to the remote and uh, google now plans to embrace the remote life with the upcoming chromecast ultra full-fledged android tv apps who knows where that goes could have games stadia component mm -hmm. i had a stadia story in here but it was kind of depressing so uh, i got i got rid of it they were anyway yeah uh amazon is launching a business selling automated checkout to retailers so this is their service that we've talked about a number of times i'm really obsessed with it i'm interested in it i i, I just love this idea of casually walking into a store and walking out. Like the young version of me would have been so impressed by that. You're practically shoplifting. Of course you're not. Yeah. But just the idea of grabbing whatever you want and walking out, it's very compelling to me. Now up until this point, this has been technology that's only be, been utilized at their stores, Amazon Go stores. And then we talked 
most recently about a bigger version they were rolling out to a full-scale grocery store, Amazon branded. But this announcement here is an even bigger picture play in which they're set to announce a new business in which they're going to be selling the technology behind these stores to other stores and retailers, convenience stores, gas stations, uh, potentially other grocery stores, drug stores, who knows, really, whoever wants to buy the tech. Walmart. Walmart could say, you know what? We can't do that. Yeah, let's work together. I'm we're not even, we're not even, the, we got the, we got us. the physical space. Of course, that won't happen. That yeah. would never happen. But this uh, creates a scenario where this technology can roll out far more rapidly than Amazon can open their own physical stores because obviously these physical stores are currently sitting there. I just think around me, the, the various places I visit, if they could snap, you know, tomorrow, one of these, implement this tech, and now I'm walking, now I'm Amazon going, but I don't need an Amazon Go. Amazon going? I'm Amazon <laughs> going. That's like, is that, that sounds like some sort of, uh, like a name. Yeah. Nice to meet you. It became a verb. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I'm Amazon going. It, that's like a name in 2074. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know why I feel like that. There was the guy, that former Blue Jay, his name was Goins. Oh, yeah. Ryan Goins. So it got me thinking about the last name, Goin. What if your last name was Goin? Yeah. Will Goin. You're what? not staying. Well, you, you have Will do. so why are we even not, talking about this? Not. You have it all beat, and you always have. Uh, so they didn't go into too much detail about who they've signed the deals with or who their customers are going to be for this technology. They just said they have several signed deals and the customers are private for the time being. Uh, their technology means a bunch of cameras in the store that can identify your face ultimately. Now in Amazon stores, there'll be something tied to your Amazon profile and your smartphone. The suggestion here for third party stores is what'll happen is you'll go through a turnstile as if you were about to hop on the subway, and you'll just swipe your credit card at that moment, which will essentially open a tab, mm. at which point your face will be registered to that card for your entire excursion within the store. And as you exit, boom, the charge shows up on the card. The charge will also apply to anybody who's with you and travels through the turnstile at that time. Mm. So if they grab something, it will, you can, they can put it on your bill. Uh, what does this mean for Amazon? Oh, man. If they can sign up enough customers and people become comfortable with this, their ability to build a profile around you and your identity and your card is, and your behaviors and your habits will, and the, the type of sandwich that you buy and how long you look at it before you buy it. We are talking about micro behaviors. Look at your sandwich longer. Look at your sandwich longer. No you can't already be walking uh -uh. after you picked up the sandwich. She didn't even look at it. It doesn't matter. Then don't look at it at all. It's one or the other, right? If that's your go-to sandwich. <laughs> you just wanted to pick out no, 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 no. sandwich. We're not going here again. Come on now. Amazon Go has brought shopping without checkout lines into the mainstream and the market for retail with cashiers, which, by the way, is one of the most common vocations in the United States. This could grow to $50 billion. That's the estimation. Uh, it's cool technology, man. Nonetheless, people can try to hack it. That's for certain. Mm -hmm. But I, they call the technology just walk out. Just walk out technology. I love it. So you walk in, Will, and much like you see maybe a Google Pay or an Apple Pay logo, you would see an Amazon just walk out at the front of the store. At which point you would know if you're willing to swipe that moment there. There you go. You get right out of town. You get out of Dodge. You grab and go. You Amazon just walk out. Just a bunch of sandwiches I didn't look at. You know what's weird about this? What if you actually are a shoplifter? And you just say, no, 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 no. I was Amazon. I'm Amazon just the cops well, It's show like, up. oh, I forgot. Yeah, I'm just walk out. No, no, no. I'm Amazon just walk out. Yeah. That's kind of a cool defense right there. But then they obviously would still tackle you. I guess it would work one time. Yeah. And they say, no, you got to scan your thing. What's your the matter with your you? Your face was here. Yeah. Like, 
It's also Amazon. Ago. You really want to mess with Amazon of all the people you could mess with? Yeah. My God, they know everything about you, Will. They know all that toilet paper you ordered yesterday. You know what I mean? Stocking up. Gold bond. Yeah, they know too much about you already. Yeah. Uh, we have a collab, an unexpected collab, Levi's and Nintendo. Mm. They have made Super Mario-themed overalls. And personally, I think you could pull this off, Will. Wait, the overalls or the hoodie? No, the overalls. <clears throat> And, they, and the hoodie. And how the do hoodie. they look Mario inspired? They just look but like the overalls are what I care about because I feel like you could pull it off. <laughs> I mean, farmer will. <laughs> no, because if you scroll down, the best part, first of all, it's because Mario wears the overalls. Yeah. And it's maybe. a Levi's collab and they got the jean thing going on. So you got to do something. So it's Mario's overalls. And if you scroll down to the, to the Twitter post, you see the coins in the pocket. That's the key. That's the collab, the coins in the pot, because you're out Subtle. there picking up coins, sir. Subtle. I like it. It's cool. Okay, there yeah. we go. You could pull that off. It's not like this giant Mario face in the front of the overall. No, it's a little. It's, it's just subtle. a little touch. Yeah. Now, at the same time, they put out the the denim with the huge logo, and they put out the the short short. That's could yeah, be that's, your that could be your Coachella much. look right there. <laughs> the girl. That's right. <laughs> <Good> <laughs> Or the guy, whatever. I, hey, man, it's 2020. Whatever you want. <laughs> you could go as the girl, the guy, or their pet. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a funny, it's a funny, unexpected kind of collab. Uh, but maybe it's a fun one. Like I said, at least in this case, Mario has a history with overalls, so it uh -huh. kind of makes sense. It's not forced too much. Right. So what can we say about it? Uh, are they sold out? How much are they? They are between fifty and two hundred dollars. Okay. The quality of the overalls is not clear. <laughs> this is from The Verge. Well, obviously, it's not out yet, so well, out, based on Levi's, can't really be clear. Levi's is pretty good. Although they do have the coin graphic on the on the pocket, that's the that's the key. They say they'll be. They're, they're for Mario cosplayers. Is that right? Is there is there is there such a thing as a Mario cosplayer? Can we get a Google image search on that? I didn't. I wasn't. You know, I don't know anything about the cosplaying thing. I know oh, there nothing. There could be some raunchy video uh, photos there. But that's no. That's just <laughs> wait. A, uh, no, no. That's wait a sec. Those are Halloween costumes. The first couple. What's the difference? Will, can you explain to me what's the difference between a costume and a cosplay? Like, does a cosplay uh, need some level of customization? Well, to, you got to play the part, I think, Well, at, well in, in cosplay. So you have to act a little bit? Yeah, you have to act like the character. No, but what I'm saying... Whereas a costume is just a costume. What I'm saying is, do you... I think. If you're willing to, let's say you're willing to act, you still can't just pick up a Halloween costume and say, I'm a cosplayer. No, no. You can't show up to some you convention. You have to put effort into it. Yeah, with an off-the-shelf, yeah. I'm just guessing. Custom, almost everything. I'm just guessing right now. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Which is, di which is weird because I could go to a sneaker convention and wear some off-the-shelf sneakers. But you're not cosplaying. <laughs> no, I know I'm not, but I, what, what I'm saying is I, it's, it's, it's interesting to me where that line is. Like, in order to participate properly, there are some rules that aren't yeah. necessarily obvious to the general public, people like me that aren't in the game. Yeah. But there's other ones where I feel like I could participate in a peripheral way, like the sneaker convention. I could show up and appreciate. I could go to a baseball card convention and figure it out. Yeah. But the cosplay has got some rules to it. I guess everything does. What do I know? I don't know. I've been to, to E3 before. Mm -hmm. There's rules there. Yeah. There's costumes. Yeah. You know, I, I'm very boring when I go there. Well, I, you just I'm dress not, up as Lou. I have no special outfits. There you go. Actually, I have no right. special outfits for anything. I, yeah. I have the same. I have the same outfit for every occasion. So a wedding, you're just. Yeah, I have the. I have one. I have one look. Hoodie. I have one look, one outfit. It removes the complication. I get up. I go. Uh, it removes the complication. I have too many shoes, though. So that's probably why I said yeah. the sneaker thing. But they're all the same shoes. Uh, yeah. I have... Mostly Ultra Boost. I have probably yeah. 
20 pairs of Ultra Boost shoes. Just flying around. In yeah, so it's, tripped in one. it's a low shoe count out here right now. Well, these boots over here, they popped out just because of the winter, but the winter is officially over. I don't know if you knew that. I'm the groundhog right now. Winter's officially over. But I could just say when I, you know, here's what it is, Will. When I find something that works for me, I find something that I like. That means something to me. Oh, I, pay, I agree, man. I pay attention to it and I say to myself, you know, not that I stop hunting. I'm out there. I'm in the world. But you get like 500 pairs of it. I'll just tell you what. I didn't find something as comfortable yeah. for a casual wear as the Ultra Boost. Yeah. That's the real talk on the situation. And so every time I pop something else, give something a chance, I say to myself, what am I doing here? My foot is miserable right now. What am I trying to prove? What am I trying to sacrifice in exchange for some new style? You see what I mean here? It's got to have, it's got to have, I have this, this line, the form function thing, where I don't mind some form. I'll take your, I'll take that form. But I feel I skew a little bit in the functionality category uh. where the form is a nice bonus, but I feel I put the function lens first. Uh. A lot of times. I mean, it depends on the, it obviously depends on the segment and so forth. And I'm, fl I'm flipping smartphones half the time. I'm flipping right, right, and right. closing and slapping. And, yeah. But certainly in this department with the casual and the comfortable shoe, I like a certain style to it, but it's the feeling first. Yeah. Your bunions matter. They do.